Whip him out Wednesday. Woohoo! Well, the latest plane crash, a um, hundred yards to our north, actually. So, uh, it was so close when it uh, happened. Jesus Christ. We're a beaten city. I can't even uh, believe uh, when, when I woke up. First of all, I'll tell you, I, I, I stayed in town, thank God, because I never would have gotten in from Brooklyn. No way, no show today. I, I did, turned around and, and hid in, in my bedroom. So I have the alarm set uh, for like 10.04, I guess it was set for. And uh, it goes off, but it's uh, one of those, uh, you know, clock alarm, clock radio things. So it's, it's on one of those stations. And I hear the traffic guy uh, doing a traffic report at 10.04. Now, in New York, you know you get it on the eights and the ones, depending on what station you're in. So you alarm look. goes off, and you hear traffic guy. On the fours. And you look at, uh, and it's 10.04. Okay. And he says, he goes, and word now coming in. And then my girlfriend leans over and turns the radio off. I'm so like, that's all you heard. I'm like, and, but I'm thinking. I'm like, there's something strange going on here. And I'm hearing, outside. So then uh, I go, all right, I, I, I remember the phone ringing. So someone left me a message on my cell phone. So I go to check my messages on the cell phone. <laughs> all circuits are busy. I'm like, uh-oh. Oh, boy. Last time this happened, uh, it was a couple of months ago. So I go, give me the remote. And I, I winced. I actually winced. Pointed it to the TV and hit on to see what it was all about. And I just see a fire and uh, American Airlines plane, the, the text on the bottom. Ah, this is great. This is good. You can't imagine. You can't even fathom it would uh, be a coincidence and just be a standard uh, run-of-the-mill plane crash after what's happened. I think it's a coincidence, my friend. Well, that signs are pointing that way, but I don't know. I'm still holding judgment because you know something? There's plenty of airports, there's plenty of planes, and there's plenty of other cities that could have a goddamn plane crash. But why the hell does it have to be New York? By the way, I have to announce our favorite syndicated city. Yeah? That would be Boston, Massachusetts. Why is that? Because they were the only station... That called to make sure you and I and the rest of the gang on the Opie and Anthony show is okay. Oh, I'm sure Boston. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how Boston was responsible for this one. <laughs> what happened there? There's got to be some Boston connection. The, o- <laughs> the only city that called to make sure you and I were okay. That's true. No one else really cared. We didn't get that call from uh, San Francisco, did we? No, or Portland. We didn't get a Portland call. No one yeah. called us from Bigfoot country. No. So, but I was talking to, Ed, uh, I was talking to Oedipus, and uh, I go, we're kind of relieved down here because it's looking like it was mechanical failure. Relieved. We live in, a, in, in an age where we're now relieved when we find out a, a complete disaster is uh, a mechanical failure, most likely instead of a terrorist attack. Well, you know something? Nothing's been ruled out yet, and I'm still uh, uh, kind of leaning toward, uh, I, I think it was mechanical, but... I'm not ruling anything no, out at this time, Opie, until my investigation proceeds. They uh, said they found the black box, so they'll be looking at that. And here's my theory. Bomb in the goddamn cargo bay. Oh, I don't say that. They ne- but the thing is, that's been a huge issue right now. They uh, ask you, did you pack your own bags? Yeah. Have they been with you? Yeah. All right. We'll check them here. Put the tagger on it, and, and there it goes. Don't say that. And then they never check if you're on the plane and your bags are on the plane. They don't even do that. There's no way they could check. So I'm thinking uh, cargo door gets uh, blown off. Where does that go? Right into the old engine. Boom. I don't know. I'm saying mechanical. Not who am I? I'm saying mechanical uh, failure and uh, caused by flock of seagulls. You think it was the band? Should they be held responsible for this? And I ran. It was a flock of seagulls, my friend. They say they have problems at Kennedy with the birds. Yeah? Lots and lots of birds around Kennedy Airport. They get sucked into the uh, the engine there. Well, you know something? I think that the pilots are trained for stuff like that. That's just a ridiculous regular uh, engine failure. You know what I mean? It doesn't blow the engine off of your wing for the most part. I don't know. And then when you're taking off, you can't lose an engine like that. Let me they tell said you. it went straight down, so it didn't even do it as much damage as it could have. Let me tell you something, man. I, mm. uh, I, I think just about every person that listens to the show has flown out of Kennedy Airport. Yeah. The, the plane was only in the air for three minutes. We've all seen that stre- stretch of land where it hit. 
Oh, yeah. That little peninsula there. Oh, when you're coming in. The Rockaways. In. Right. Sure. And, and believe me, for the first uh, two minutes, 50 seconds, everything was fine. That was a very short trip down. And why, you know, enough already. Did you see all... Here's another thing. No God. Wake up, people. There's no God. How many New Yorkers... Have you seen on the news and everywhere else huddle together in mass prayer for our fair city? How many times do you see this? How many clergymen have you seen at Ground Zero and at uh, schools and with politicians talking about prayer and how we're, we're stronger than ever and God will pay? All that prayer, what did it get us? Another aircraft full of fuel dropped on a, a town. There's no God. There's no God. I'm just a man. I'm just a man like you. <laughs> Caddyshack reference is always nice. You hear the uh, F-15s? Yeah. That's something. Boy, them things screaming. f 15 just circling over Manhattan again. <laughs> what the hell happened? What did I miss? You know, we got the front row seats to Armageddon. You could live through life. You could sit back and live through life during a very boring period of time on this planet. I'm sure... Hundreds of years have gone by in certain places on this globe where nothing happened. If you're going to live, this is a good time to live. Welcome to the end of the world. We're all here to see it. We're all, And this show is here to get you through it. We'll get you through We're your Armageddon show. You could have lived in the wild, wild west where the, the, the craziest thing that happened in your lifetime was, uh, you know, uh, an Indian tribe almost attacked your village. The Indians <laughs> got gotcha. you. Almost, almost, almost attacked your town. It was the town over, but they came close. This is just insane now. It's it's really yeah, good. planes Ridiculous. falling out of the sky. Great. Where's Earl? Earl had a vision. Yeah. Earl, get a mic. Uh, Earl had a vision. I didn't. I had a nightmare. You had a nightmare. Yes. All right. Earl had a nightmare. What was your nightmare, Black Earl? That I was walking. It was the, driving down the Van Wick, and I'm looking up, and the f plane is going overhead, and Van Wick, and it explodes. Really? Yeah. You had that when? Last night. Oh, my God, call Kreskin. My goodness. I mean, I, I, I did that because I'm a black girl from the future, and what I did was I uh, uh, transported myself uh, in the, uh, the uh, DeLorean. I went to the future, and uh, let me tell you something. I saw the plane crash. Then I came back, but I was going to warn people, but I fell asleep. I was tired from working on the public file uh, all day. <laughs> So now I gotta go back in the time machine tonight, go back to two days ago, see the plane crash again in my visions, and then warn people. I hope I don't get stuck doing something like the public file or a sticker stop. I need I need some uh, energy for my time machine, my DeLorean. There I was speeding down the Van Wick in my DeLorean. I reached 88 miles per hour. And I went into the past. I ended up at the enchantment under the sea ball when I looked up and I saw a plane crash into the clock tower at exactly 10 o'clock. I had to get my pappy and my mammy together or I wouldn't be born. I started disappearing and then I played the guitar like Chuck Berry and I saw the plane crash. And Biff was trying to get my mammy. So I told my pappy, you punch Biff in the face. And I, everything will be fine. I'll be able to go back to the future and tell people about the brain crash. Because I saw the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> and, but then when I got uh, back to the future, I went home and I was going to call up, I swear, I was going to call up American Airlines and tell them, don't take off the plane because I saw the plane crash. But I laid down for two seconds, I fell asleep. Because I, I was working on the public fire. I don't know what that is, but I was working on it. And then I went out to the garage. I had a brand new Toyota 4x4. <laughs> and a girl that looked real 80s. <laughs> and my mammy and pappy were older, but they were different. And all of a sudden, they were cool. My pappy was an author. And my mammy was a great mom. <laughs> and the mayor of our town was a white guy that used to work at the diner. <laughs> And Biff was out picking cotton in our yard. <laughs> That's called revenge.
you know, people died in the plane crash because I fell asleep, but some good things happen to Black Earth in the future. So it's cool. But I'll try it again tomorrow. Maybe I'll go to the Old West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Old West. Black Earl should have helped us out. So Earl had a vision. Black Earl, call me now for your free reading. I'm going to go on. Call me now for your tarot card reading. I'm going to go on record and say that Earl's the only one that has had a nightmare about uh, planes crashing in the last two months. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I've been more than one. Maybe everyone has had a nightmare at some point in the past two months about a plane crash. Holy s! <laughs> Where, Doc Brown's checking in from Hill Valley. Yeah, he goes, "How spooky!" Ten o four. Anthony woke up this morning. Ten o four. Lightning hit the clock tower. <laughs> Did it really? Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. I guess so. That's a movie plot. Anthony, you have to go back to the future. <laughs> huh. Oh no, Black Earl's meeting his pappy. <laughs> Uh, Pete, what do you have, bro? You had a nightmare, too? Oh, my God. Oh, and I couldn't believe it. Like, girl, I had a nightmare? Yeah. yeah. I woke up, I looked in the mirror, and I'm black. <laughs> oh, fucking God. Oh, wait, come on. <laughs> no, that's, that's not nice. That's Earl? Earl, I apologize personally yes, for that phone. Earl. How did I know he was going to say something like that? <laughs> I got to go back to the future because uh, Biff has stole the sports book. <laughs> and now he's uh, changed uh, my, my community forever. Where the flux capacitor? <laughs> Steve, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey man. Uh, and just to back up on your Back to the Future point. Yeah. November fifth was the day he went back to 1955, and then of course the doc banged his head on the wall on the toilet, came up with the flux capacitor. But a week later was the day of the clock tower striking, which is November 12th. <laughs> no way. No I way. Swear. No I way. swear. Just Remember stop. next week we're sending you back to the future. Back to the future. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, I'm, lo I'm looking at all kinds of back to the future sites. And all I could see is uh, the date Marty travels back in time to, November yeah. 5th. Okay. So yeah, and 5th, then a week and later. And then a week later. <laughs> stays a week. Crazy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he stayed a week because he had to stay for the dance. <laughs> you guys suck. Take uh, care. Why is there a strange Back to the Future tie-in with my life here this morning? <laughs> the 1004 thing is right, too? 1004 was, yes, I looked at that. It was, it was 1004. Your alarm clock went off at 1004 in the hotel. 1004. And that's when you heard the traffic reporter uh, saying something <laughs> yes, before your girlfriend shut off the alarm clock, and then you turned on the TV to see this disaster. And I knew none of this until after I, I went off on the Earl Back to the Future tie-in. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. And then people are saying, um, I heard this on the news, too. Thank God there is churches and schools in the area, and thank God they weren't hit. There's a holiday. They're empty. Wouldn't it be better if it was it got hit an empty building instead of uh, houses with people in them? Thank God. Thank God it didn't hit the church. The plane took out a few uh, a few houses. What about those people? I know. And then they look for survivors, which is just... What about the guy filling up his tank and all of a sudden the, uh, the, the jet engine just kind of rolls up next to your SUV? You have to move that. You have to move that. I cannot pump gas with that here. <laughs> some dopey some Haji probably went out and put, put a gas pump into it. How much? Cash or credit? Yes, my friend. That is strange car. <laughs> Are you Earl? What is this? Time machine? Earl Stradamus. Here's my quatrain. <laughs> I have another quattering. I see a plane crash. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, Earl had a nightmare last night that Earl a plane had exploded over the Van Wick Expressway. Like in the past two months, we haven't seen so many visions of disastrous plane crashes that uh, maybe uh, they get in your dreams. Earl, Earl, you got the shining. <laughs> Me and my grandma had to shine. We'd carry on whole conversations without talking. You got to shine. <laughs> I'm going to come to the Overlook Hotel. Tell your pappy not to hit me with an axe. <laughs>
Red rum. Go F yourself. <laughs>